so welcome to 11th lecture and from 11th lecture now we are getting into finite element analysis there are two distinct approaches in finite element method one is the variational approach which is basically energy minimization approach which is more sort of closer to the physics because you know we are calculating the energy and we are minimizing the energy and why we minimize energy is basically because fields will generally fields would always go get distributed in a in a given problem domain such that energy content is minimized that is you know is a one of the nature's laws so in the fields will get distributed such that energy content is minimized there is another approach weighted residual approach right wherein we minimize errors because of approximation that we are doing so we will see uh, you know this weighted residual approach little later so the first two set of lectures we will concentrate on this variational approach which is basically energy minimization see here and remember we are taking again this parallel plate capacitor problem to understand what is this you know energy minimization and how energy gets how you know the field distribution corresponds to energy minimum condition right so here always remember that uh, you know most of this problem that we are taking particularly in electrostatics you will find that we are not considering the charges on the plate because those sources because the source actually is charged always remember in electromagnetics the basic entity that source is charge only that charge when it is moving then it is current that current can be dc or time varying but the basic source is charge or current right but here you know you may wonder you know in all these things we are not actually representing charge source but the charge is represented by the corresponding boundary condition here for example 100 volts and 0 volts now again for simplicity we are neglecting the end effects right so we are considering you know it is like in one of the previous lectures we saw in, is it not we actually will terminate this whole geometry here like by this vertical boundaries and impose neumann homogeneous neumann condition that is daba v by daba x is equal to 0 right in this case right now actually you know uh, here since it is a uniform field condition because end effects are neglected everywhere the field is uniform so your electric field intensity is simply 100 100 volts by 10 meter because 10 meters is the gap between the two plates so you have you know e a given by 10 volts per meter everywhere and we know the energy is uh, you know integral volume integral half epsilon e square dv now see it is becoming easy if i had directly started with fem then i would have to explain what is this energy now we have covered almost all background theory required for fem right and it will be easier for you to understand electromagnetics aspects of fem we have to concentrate more on the maths aspects of the fem in the uh, lectures that are going to follow so energy is given by this and now here this dimension is shown here as x so you know you have in yz it is infinite in yz extent remember when we imposed here homogeneous neumann condition effectively you know you what you are doing is you are making the plate this plates infinite in extent in z direction right in y anyway into the paper it is infinite right so effectively what we are doing it is this dv is dx into 1 into 1 like we saw in basics when we did 2d approximation we always said dx into 1 is it not per meter depth and also we saw the parameters are calculated per meter depth right so here it is since it is uh, you know you are assuming infinite extent in both uh, x and y and z you have it is basically you are per meter depth in those so you are that's why he, it this will this problem will essentially reduce to 1d is it not is a 1d problem effectively right and then we also know for this problem the solution is the equispaced lines 
the equipotential lines will be equispaced, is it not? All these lines will be equispaced, right? But you know, let us assume so by our uh, logic that I we just you know saw the nature's law. So this should lead to minimum energy condition, right? So we need to prove that this indeed equispaced equipotential lines indeed lead to minimum energy condition. So, we will have a counter argument and then sort of prove it, right. So, let us assume that no, this equispaced lines are is not energy minimum condition. So, this dotted line here shown, suppose uh, you know that line is representing 90 percent of voltage, which is say 90 volts, right. And you know the so the solution is not equispaced line, but one of the lines is you know not equispaced and it is above the actual solution as. But then now what you will see the energy in this only if you consider energy in this region up to this you know 80 volts, you know energy up to 80 volts line. In the previous case, when it is exact solution the energy will be proportional to 10 square plus 10 square because E was 10, is it not? 10 volts per meter. So, E square 10 square plus 10 square that will be proportional to 200. But in case of dotted line, you will have you know assume that since this line is taken above in the top this region between the top plate and this dotted line the electric field intensity will be more, is it not? And that I have assumed that it is say 11 volt per meter and in this case between 80 volt and 90 volt, now the electric field intensity will be lower, which I am taking it as say 9 volts per meter. Now you can see you know 10 square plus 10 square is 200, 200 and 11 square plus 9 square is 202, is it not? So, this that is why the dotted case would represent higher energy than the exact solution. So, in a way we, we have proved that in this case the equipotential lines, equispace equipotential lines that leads to minimum energy condition, right. So, now actually if you take the other case wherein which also we have been seeing previously lead to ground. Now, here the equipotential lines are going to be like this, is it not? We have seen that earlier. Now, these lines are not equispaced. The actual exact solution of this would corresponding will would correspond to equipotential lines would which are not equispaced because the lines which are closer to the conductor, they will be more closely spaced as compared to equipotential lines which are towards this ground electrode, they will be sparsely spaced, right. So, now here in this case the exact solution corresponds to this non equispaced equipotential lines and in this case suppose you know you assume equispaced equipotential lines, then in fact you will calculate higher energy than the exact solution which is non uniform case and not equispaced lines. Is this point clear, right. Now, you know here equispaced lines that you will have to you know actually uh, from the FEM solution you will have to work out then and that is not very straightforward to calculate. It was very simple in case of parallel plate capacitor to prove, but here it would be difficult. But I hope intuitively you understood uh, that you know uh, why energy minimum condition uh, is the exact solution from the previous uh, you know capacitor problem. Now, let us go further. So, we are considering again I am repeating it is a source free electrostatic problem because we are not considering charges on the plates, right. But that source of charges is being represented by corresponding corresponding boundary conditions on the top and bottom plate and the corresponding energy is given by what is written there. Now, before going into you know the uh, details of this how to solve this electrostatic problem. Uh, let us see the two more standard partial differential equations. PDE stands for partial differential equation in electromagnetics. So, we will be basically considering three cases typically for low frequency electromagnetics when we are dealing with 
electrical machines and equipment. One is the magnetostatic case del square A is equal to minus mu j, where A and j are vectors. Now, again you are very comfortable with this equation, is it not? Poisson's equations for magnetostatics, where A is the magnetic vector potential, j is the current density. The second equation also we have seen, you know we had some discussion also on this, I have also explained you, you know this, this is the induced eddy current term, right, because this dA by dt is the induced electric field intensity. So, sigma dA by dt is J induced, right. So, that is why the units are matching because the unit is mu times J. So, this is also mu times induced eddy current density. Is it clear? Okay. So, del square A uh, will be equal to minus mu J if it is a static case, if it is a general transient case, this will be the case wherein this is the source source current and this is the this is representing the eddy current and I as I mentioned in that uh, previous lecture when you bring this on this side this sign becomes plus and as it it should be because source current and induced eddy current they should have opposite sign right. But their angle will not be exactly 180 degrees mind that. So, that will depend because this will be all phasors and the angle will get decided by you know many other considerations, but uh, maybe little later we will discuss this. But in general the sign should be opposite. And now if you actually are dealing with uh, time harmonic case, that means if your quantities are varying sinusoidally with you know time, then you can make convert d by dt as j omega and then you get this expression, where now this a and j they are phasors, I have not you know represented by another symbol for sake of uh, you know brevity and simpli uh, for simplicity right but remember this in this thing a and j they will be phasors now let us go further so now we have to minimize this now we are going back to electrostatic problem so first we will in this you know remaining course what we'll do is we'll start with electrostatic then we'll go to magnetostatic field then we'll go to time harmonic then we'll go to you know axisymmetric we'll uh, get into permanent magnets, we will go into transient, then forces, coupled circuit field and in that complexity we are going to proceed in this course. So, again you know always electrostatic is probably the simplest thing to analyze, so we are starting with electrostatic. So, uh, you know you are minimizing this and this we have already seen this, for 1D electrostatics you get 1 into 1, so it is basically only dx. Now, here for a standard uh, you know capacitor problem, we we know we knew that the energy is this because it is related to you know capacitor and then half epsilon E square is the energy density right and uh, that is why we started directly with uh, you know assuming that this is the energy that has to be minimized. But in general you know how do we uh, thought of for a given partial differential equation we have to know its energy, the corresponding energy to be minimized, right. So, we will later on see how do we you know find out the corresponding energy functionals that need to be minimized for each of these you know partial differential equations, right. So, then we are coming to an in important concept of what is known as functional. Now, functional is basically is the, the energy. So, functional is nothing but the energy. So, in variational calculus, we basically term energy as functional. So, functional F phi, now this phi here is potential, right. Uh, that is the reason, you know, in the previous, in the basics, we, you know, call flux by psi, because, you know, it will otherwise interfere with this simple of, uh, you know, potential. So, here phi is the potential, it could be in general electric potential, magnetic potential or any, any potential right, it is generally it is a phi, okay. In this case, if you are dealing with electrostatic, it will be you know electric potential V, okay. So, this is V for electrostatics. Now, in this case, this functional, it can be defined in general of this form, P1 to P2, that means this, there is a, this is a one dimensional domain. Uh, so, this is a one dimensional domain. So, it could be, this is a one dimensional domain.
So, this is x and this is say phi right and this is say p 1, this is p 2. So, this is a one dimensional domain from p 1 to p 2 right and say potential may be varying uh, between this like this, it may vary in any way. I have just shown by a straight line, but it need not, it can vary depending upon the boundary conditions and the source condition right. So, here now for example, so this functional energy can be in general represented by f of x phi phi dash. Now, phi dash is the derivative right. Now, here for example, if you compare here this functional for electrostatic case, here only what is appearing here only v dash because E is nothing but dv by dx is it not. So, only v dash is or phi dash is appearing. So, this E is nothing but this phi dash. So, for this case is only you know it is a energy is function of only phi dash, but in general it will not be so. It will be generally in the function of x phi phi dash. For example, in case of uh, Poisson's equation, you will get you know it as a function of phi also that we will see later. So, there will be some term in this expression which will be function of phi right. So, here so then you, you have one uh, independent variable for this case and dependent variable is phi, phi is the potential right. So, you know you have uh, this Lap in Laplace equation only phi dash appears in fun uh, functional and as I mentioned Poisson's equation phi also appears. So, we will uh, go further. So, this is what we said and then uh, Laplace equation only phi dash appears in the energy functional, but later on we will see Poisson's equation for P d for the, the corresponding functional for Poisson's equation will have phi term also. Now, we will go further and discuss more about this functional f and the corresponding variational calculus right. Now, here we know total differential d capital F is daba f by daba x into dx daba f by plus daba f by daba phi into d phi plus daba plus daba f by daba phi dash d phi dash right. But when it comes to um, variation in f in variation in f when we are doing we are not varying x. So, that is why we are saying del x is equal to 0. What it means we know that you know we, we want to minimize this energy which is represented by capital F. That energy when when we will get minimized when it will get minimized when we vary potentials at every point and for one combination of potentials at various points will get minimum energy. So, what we are doing is in this figure now this is one dimensional domain there are so many points x and there are so many points here at each of these points we will vary the potential values right. So, at this point example for example, we are varying potential from some initial guess value to something higher value. So, at this point it is varied like this. So, at every point we are varying the potential, but we are not varying x, we are not varying potential as function of x. So, we are at every x we are varying potential right. So, that is why here we are varying potential. So, that is given by del phi. So, there is variation, we are doing variation in phi. Similarly, as phi is varied, phi will be a function of x. So, phi dash also will vary. So, again there will be variation in phi dash. So, there as you vary potential, uh, there will be variation in potential uh, derivative also, but we are not varying del, we are not varying x that is why here del x here will be 0 that is why this term is not there. So, daba f by daba x into del x this term will be 0 because del x is equal to 0. So, this is the main concept in when we do variation. So, again you know del phi is variation in phi at fixed x. So, this is the various phi's that we are attempting to minimize the functional f which is the energy. Now, here let us come to this graph now this figure. Now, here what you see is 
variation of f with respect to phi. Now remember this when we are saying this phi and this phi plus del phi, this is a set of values. Now suppose if there are say 100 points here say and we calculate the energy associated with you know 100 points, so uh, and the corresponding total energy, what will happen is this phi will correspond to a vector of 100 values, right. So, all those 100 values will decide the energy of that region, one dimensional region. So, now if you change the potentials or at those 100 points, you will get new set of set, set of values of potentials that will give another uh, this, this kind of potential versus x and that may give some other energy value, right. So, this is how this is uh, done. So now when actually you are approaching the minimum energy point, what will happen when you suppose for example, this is the minimum energy potential distribution. Now if you change the potential values at all the nodes by some small value, it is not going to lead to any appreciable change in the total energy content. So that means we have reached the minimum. So that is the meaning of this state statement del f capital F is equal to f phi plus del phi is equal minus f phi is equal to 0. When this becomes 0 that means we are near the minimum energy point this will lead to 0 and that is the that corresponding phi is the solution right. Now you know let us expand this further. So what does this mean f of phi plus del phi is nothing but f of x plus del x phi plus del phi, phi dash plus del phi dash integrated over you know this domain with dx as uh, you know integration uh, distance minus this f phi as it is. Now again I just want to repeat f is just function which is function of x phi phi dash integral f dx is capital F. So functional f capital F is function of function. Right. So, this is again uh, to just highlight the difference between capital F and small f. Now, this expression, this equation, if we further simplify this, you know, uh, by using uh, standard rule that f of x plus h is equal to fx plus hf dash x, and there are remembering that there are two variables here, this and this, and this the del x is equal to 0. So, that's, that will that is why it will be only f of x and then this because del x is equal to 0. So, so that is why here you know you get as written here. So, now you have only two variables here. This will get expanded to this plus this right by the formula that I just mentioned previously. So, now this term can be written as this daba f by daba phi. I am now just omitting this thing for simplicity. And now this g, remember this g is del phi is g x, g as a function of x because this variation at every point is a function of x because here the variation is small, here the variation is bigger, here again it is becoming smaller. So, the variation that we are making in phi is function of x, right. So, that is why g is a function of x and that is nothing but del phi. So, this we are writing it like this and then this term we are you know splitting by using integration by parts and these are standard integration by parts and then uh, this term first term there which is rewritten here that becomes 0 because at when the, that term evaluated at boundaries, it will be this will reduce to 0 because g is 0 at the boundaries because potentials are already fixed at the two boundary points, right. So, this becomes 0 and then these two terms, this term and this term, these two terms are combined to get this term, right. So, they are just combined together and then this is 0. So, you get integral of this 
equal to 0. So, when this is this integral is equated to 0, we are basically minimizing the energy, right. So, if this has to be 0 and if energy has to be minimum, effectively this integrand has to be 0 because for any arbitrary g x, g of x, this whole thing can be 0 only if this is 0, right. So, this is called as euler lagrange equation and this u bracketed term is called as euler lagrange expression, right. Now, let us see some uh, you know, application and example to understand what we just now saw in little bit more depth. Now, let us again take a parallel plate capacitor problem and we know the functional for that is half integral epsilon e square dx, right and is one dimensional that is why this dv reduces to simply dx into 1 into 1, right. So, now uh, e is nothing but dv by dx, right and then that is why f becomes half the function becomes half epsilon dv by dx whole square right dv by dx square and then integral f dx is nothing but capital F. Now, if we substitute now if we suppose we want to solve uh, this capacitor problem and find out the distribution we will assume some potential distribution v right. If that potential distribution v is exact solution and we know it then when it is substituted in this Euler Lagrange equation the energy will be minimized because solution is known and it is exact. So, when you substitute in Euler Lagrange equation, you will get it equal to 0, and uh, that, that is what. So, here we are assuming that this V is known, exact solution is known, and when it is substituted in this Euler Lagrange expression, we will get on the right hand side 0, and then if that energy gets minimized in that way this V is known exactly. Now, let us see when in Euler Lagrange equation when you substitute this x, uh, f and then further simplify you will get this as d 2 v by d x square equal to 0. So, this we are getting Laplace equation in 1 d. So, when this exact solution say was known to us and we substituted in Euler Lagrange expression we got you know this Euler Lagrange equation satis uh, getting satisfied and that automatically is leading to Laplace equation getting satisfied by this potential which is known. So, this is what you know the meaning of uh, Euler Lagrange equation and minimum energy condition and how that can be used in practical you know application like parallel plate capacitor. So, uh, again I want to highlight this here f was only function of v dash uh, dv by dx, but in general it can be function of x, v and v dash. We will see such examples uh, in some other cases later. Thank you.